Hey guys, so I did a Facebook Live a few months ago about how I make gluten-free bread in the bread machine and it was really popular and a lot of people really liked it and <laughs> I'm not a baker so I was surprised that it was helpful to so many people because it's kind of my baking hack because I'm not very good at baking. I'm kind of more a cook where I just throw things together and la la but you know with baking you kind of have to follow rules. I'm not very good at following rules. But doing this is really easy. So I know there's a lot of people out there who do gluten-free. We've been on this journey for a few years. My husband has severe issues and I've been gluten-free for a while. My brain just thinks better. I don't know. I don't get as achy. I feel better. I'm telling you guys, what we eat affects us so much. So I don't feel like everyone should go gluten-free. I mean, that's up to what makes you feel better. But if you do, this is so much easier and so much cheaper and better than that bread you pay like six bucks for. Okay, so super simple stuff going on here. Here's my flour. It's in this little bag because we have found a blend that I love, but it is kind of pricey in the store. So I buy it on Amazon. I buy it in this big bag. Not super practical. So most of the time this stays out in our freezer. This is Pamela's bread flour. And I use this for pretty much most of my baking. Now you can buy a nice like three pound bag off Amazon and I can link that in the comments below. We love this flour. We've tried a few other flour blends. This works for us. So, you know, when it comes to gluten free stuff, like if I find something that works, I'm not going to change it for a while. I'm just going to go with it. So, super duper easy. So this is our really old bread machine that my awesome mother-in-law gave me and has this little thing in the middle that will mix it. So just make sure that's in there because I have used these before and washed them and forgot to put it back in or whatever. That's all this is. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I have my two, my two cup measuring cup. And what you got to do is you put in one third oil. I tend to use canola oil. Um, you could use olive oil to kind of give it a more rustic bread taste probably. This one's pretty like neutral. You don't taste much from it. Either way, so there's my oil, and then you crack in two eggs. Uh, there we go. One, two. I'm telling you guys, this is really easy. Boom. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add warm water up to the two cup mark. So um, I just kind of let my water run a little bit in the sink. Okay, it's pretty warm because I don't leave my eggs out and like let them come to room temperature which you should. I have it a little bit warmer than I would otherwise, but I don't want to cook my eggs because no one wants scrambled eggs in their bread. Okay, so I just let this come up to two cups. And one more. Okay. That's roughly two cups of liquid. And then I will just mix this. Okay, so per the instructions, you would normally add another two tablespoons of warm water. And this is the other reason I have my water a little warmer. Because instead of adding two tablespoons of warm water, I add apple cider vinegar. Now this is our cheap vinegar option. We do do the nice bugs. Sometimes when we are consuming vinegar, you know, raw, we would use this stuff. But when I'm just cooking, I use the cheap stuff because it's cheaper. <laughs> so now this is one of my favorite things I have learned about gluten-free cooking, guys, because this adds flavor. It just adds, you know, like that tangy taste, but you, you don't taste it. Like my family didn't notice that I put it in. It's just kind of more moist and flavorful and easy. So why not? So I just add two tablespoons into the liquid portion. Boom. Okay. Next up. Ta da Liquids go into my fancy, fancy thing there. Okay. And then, so I have my warm liquids in there. And then per the instructions on my little bread machine thing, you put in the liquids, and then you put in your flour, and then you put your yeast on top. So this is going to be three cups of my flour mix. Now, salt is in here and a little bit of sugar, like just a tiny bit is in here, so I'm not adding extra of those things. Sugar, of course, is important when you're doing products that you 
create baking things that you want to rise because yeast needs warmth, wet, and sugar to help it rise. So you do usually have to have some kind of sugar thing in there to help your products rise. Okay. Boom. And then we just add uh, a pack. You can do a packet of yeast or two and a half, two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast. So we have a Winco. Have you all have you all heard of Winco? I don't know if it's everywhere. We used to live in Oregon, and they had Winco there, and we loved it. And it just came to Texas right down the street from us. So you can buy things in bulk. So this is my yeast in bulk, and it's much cheaper that way. So I just, okay, I lost my, oh, something right there. Okay, so just two and a half teaspoons. Yeast, very good. Two and a fourth. I actually grabbed a half, so I'm putting half in. So again, I'm not a super precise kind of person, but I very rarely have this turn out bad. Uh, with these few tricks that I've learned, it comes out fine. So, now, this is gluten-free flour, and it kind of needs more mixing, I have found, than regular flour. So what I usually do is I actually pre-mix this before I put it in to get it started. Um, we were watching the British baking show. You guys all have seen that? It's so, we love it. It's so calming and fun and funny. It's really cool. And on there, they were talking about how you had to beat gluten-free flour more, and I was like, oh. So, yes, I love my cooking shows. That's, that's how I learn things. <laughs> okay, so I've got this kind of, I just basically combined the ingredients. I'm not like super mixing. And I think this is because it's older. It just doesn't mix them as well. There have been times where if I just dumped it and left it, like the top never got mixed. <laughs> so it baked, but the top was not exactly edible. So this is kind of what I'm going for. See if you can focus on that. It's kind of a smooth texture. I'm gonna shake it off my whisk. And so I have found the three hour cycle is the best. There's also a four. On this machine, it's under rapid bread. So it's about three hours. I have another one, because I got it free. So like right after this, I'm gonna whip up another batch and then I'll have both of them cooking. It's awesome, then I have two loaves done. So I put this in. And then I go menu, rapid bread, start. Two hours and 50 minutes, I have a big beautiful loaf of bread. It's so easy guys. So I think it would be faster if I did in the oven. You only have to raise gluten-free bread once. So I could do it faster, but with this I can leave, I can go do stuff, and it will just sit here wait because it will automatically shut off, it will cool. In fact, I'll be honest, there was one time I turned it on at like six at night and it was, you know, I was gonna just take it off at nine before I go to bed. And I totally forgot about it till the next morning and it was fine. I mean, this is gluten-free bread, so, you know, the texture isn't exactly the same as regular bread, but when it comes out, it totally has that like homemade bread, like smell and warmth, and it's so good with just warm with, you know, honey and butter. Uh, it makes great sandwiches. A lot of times I cut them ahead of time because if my family tries to go at it. It can be a little messy. But if you've been gluten-free for a while, anything you have time, you have something that's kind of close to bread, you're just like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> and that's what, how it is for me. So, uh, and my husband, we hadn't, I started doing this like six months ago, like really doing it. And he was just so excited that there would be like bread in the fridge, you know. Oh, and another trick that we have learned when I'm making for my daughter's like sandwiches, you want to toast it and then make the sandwich and then you can it will be good later because it just the texture holds up better if you've toasted it and then it will make a good sandwich afterwards versus the dry and probably a lot of you gluten-free people know this it also makes fantastic french toast because it will really like let it sit maybe even overnight and that stuff and it'll be so it really soaks up a lot because it can be a little dry i also the ends like sometimes i'll kind of crumble at the end and i save those and i'll put them in and i put them in my freezer and then I can use it for any time I need breadcrumbs or croutons or things like that where I just need that bread and then I haven't wasted it. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. 
Uh, please comment. Tell me what you guys think. What do you guys do for your gluten-free things? I'd love to hear that. Uh, like and subscribe to this video. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.